Let's talk about sulfonylureas and how they work, plus some pharmacology. Here's everything we'll talk about, timestamps down below, and a short quiz at the end. To truly understand sulfonylureas, we would need to do a quick overview before we get into the details. There's three major ones we'll discuss about. We have glipizide, glimepiride, and glyburide. All these agents, they're used for type 2 diabetes. And the whole point of managing diabetes is to lower your blood glucose levels so that we have normal blood sugar levels in our patient population. Anytime we discuss diabetes medication management, it's always good to know which options we have oral and which options are injectable. In this case, we know sulfurias are oral medications, so we'll use that as one of our tools in our arsenal. And the last thing is, it's very important to know that sulfurias only work in type 2 diabetic patients. They do not work in type 1, and there's a reason for that, which we'll dive in in a little bit. Now that we had a quick overview, let's talk about how sulfurias actually work. So anytime we have glucose in our system, let's say we eat cookies, or we even have our liver that has the ability to create glucose, that glucose essentially is in our bloodstream. And that glucose is looking for insulin so that they could link up together to get inside our tissues and cells. The glucose is a form of energy, and our cells need that energy. But our cells can't get that glucose unless we have insulin because insulin is what allows the glucose to enter the cells. And here's a good point to differentiate type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Remember, sulfurias only work in type 2 diabetes. Why? Because type 2 diabetes is when the body tissues have a resistance to insulin. In other words, the body is creating insulin no problem, but there's so much glucose that the cells truly become resistant. Versus type 1 diabetes, where it's more of an autoimmune disease in the sense that it damages the pancreas where insulin is made. And because of that, the pancreas can't produce insulin or it can't produce enough insulin. So where do sulfurias come into play? Well, let's say a patient takes glipizide, which is one of our options. That glipizide is going to travel to the pancreas where it will make the pancreas force out more insulin through the beta cells. The beta cells are actually what produce insulin. So we have this medication that kind of squeezes out the beta cells to produce more and more insulin. And remember, What's the issue with type 2 diabetes? There's insulin resistance. So the fix to that is to have even more insulin to allow glucose to enter those cells. So the sulfurias will push out more and more insulin in our bloodstream. And that makes sense why these can only work in type 2 diabetic patients. Remember, type 1, their pancreas can't produce insulin. So there are no beta cells to squeeze more insulin out of. In type 2, the pancreas is working fine. Insulin is being produced. And the sulfurias are supercharging that pancreas and the beta cells to produce even more insulin. Overall, this causes lower blood glucose levels, which is exactly what we want in our diabetic population. When do we use sulfonylureas? Well, we already talked about it. It's only used in type 2 diabetic patients. Some caveats is it's not a first-line agent. Our first-line agent, if you remember, it's going to be metformin. So typically, these agents are add-on. Do not use these agents in type 1 because remember, type 1 don't have functioning pancreas and beta cells. Let's get a little deeper in the dosing and some of the adjustments. So our sulfonylureas, we have three major ones. We have glyburide, glimepiride, and glipizide. Starting with glyburide, the dose is anywhere from 2.5 milligrams to 20 milligrams in a day. 
and you can take that in one or two divided doses. Glimepiride, it's a little bit easier. It's anywhere from one to eight milligrams daily. And then glipizide, we go back to two and a half to 20 milligrams in a day in one or two divided doses. A big thing here is you want to start with a low dose and slowly titrate up every week if needed. You don't want to start with the highest dose right off the bat. Out of these three, we're going to put a star next to glipizide because this actually is the least dependent on kidney clearance. What does that mean? If you have a patient that has poor or worsening kidney function and they need a sulfurea to manage their diabetes, glipizide is going to be your best choice because it doesn't depend on the kidneys as much as these other two agents. One big caveat is if a patient skips a meal, they skip a dose. Remember, these medications force out insulin. So if you don't have glucose to offset the insulin, we're going to see some side effects like hypoglycemia. So then let's talk about those side effects, right? So we already talked about hypoglycemia. As your pancreas is forced to make more and more insulin, you need to have glucose. And if you don't, you'll start seeing the side effects of hypoglycemia. So the patient could be shaking, they could pass out, their blood sugar dipped so low that it's causing all of these nasty side effects. And it's actually very dangerous to have hypoglycemia. The second side effect is weight gain. Anytime we have insulin production, there's always weight gain associated with it. This is something you should tell your patients so they should know ahead of time. The third side effect is going to be beta cell burnout. And remember, we have our pancreas and specifically those beta cells being forced to produce more and more insulin, right? They're working overtime. And what we typically see is after five to 10 years, those beta cells start to burn out. And that's obviously not good. So at that point, we may need to get other medications involved, maybe even insulin injectable. But this is something that happens way down the road as you use the medication. And the last thing I want to touch on is sulfa allergies. So you may have guessed sulfonylureas have a sulfa group in them. And if a patient has a sulfa allergy, there is a chance to cause an allergic reaction. And each allergy is different. So you have to approach it depending on what the sulfa allergy is, right? So some patients say, oh, they get nausea, which isn't an allergy, but other patients can get skin hives or full-blown anaphylaxis. So you have to be cautious when prescribing any sulfa medications like sulfonylureas. All right, let's do a quick summary. We made it to the end. We talked about sulfonylureas, how they're used in type 2 diabetic patients, because these patients have a resistance to insulin and their pancreas is working. We talked about sulfonylureas and how they're oral medications, right? Because diabetes is managed by oral medications and injectables. This is one of our oral agents. We said how they work at the pancreas. They're squeezing out those beta cells to produce more and more insulin. Again, we harped on the fact that it's used in only type 2 diabetic patients because of the mechanism of action. We discussed all three sulfonylureas, glyburide, glimepiride, glipizide, we talked about dosing, and then we also talked about how glipizide is the least dependent on renal function, so you should use it in patients that have poor renal function. We also talked about how these agents, the whole purpose of these agents is to decrease your blood glucose levels, and then we got into some of the side effects. So we talked about the hypoglycemia, we talked about potential weight gain, we said how we could have beta cell burnout in our pancreas after so many years, and then also to be mindful of any sulfa allergies a patient might have. So that's everything. Let's take a short quiz at the end so we could see what we retained. Which sulfurea is suited best for people with poor kidney function? What is the mechanism of action of glipizide?
Which allergy should you look out for if a patient is taking glimepiride? Which indication are sulfonylureas used for?